Yeah, when I was about 11 years old or so, my, uh, you know, it's, my grandfather had it, and he wanted me to just turn shafts, you know. Yeah. And shafts get pretty boring after a while. I look at a piece of round steel. He says, Grandpa, I want to turn some threads. He said, no, no, you need to keep turning shafts. So I said, okay, Grandpa. So I found me a shafts. And I made, <laughs> I made me a threads on that thing. And I uh, took it up there and showed Granddad. I said, well, wow, that's pretty good, boy. <laughs> Hello friends, so as you saw in our last video, my son had purchased a lathe. We had both had interest in getting a lathe. Um, we'd been looking around, but we didn't know that it was going to be coming sooner than later. Um, I was browsing the classifieds on my phone and I found a chain fall that I liked and I contacted the seller and I went and visited about the chain fall with him. And while I was there purchasing the chain fall, I asked him if he had an anvil or um, a lathe for sale. Um, he told me yes he had an anvil and he said no he wouldn't sell it to me I told him he was a smart man and he then guided me to a deep dark corner of a shop and underneath a cloth uh, blanket we found this lathe so at the time I didn't know much about this lathe um, I took some photos I took a quick video with my phone and I told him that I wanted to come home and I wanted to speak to my son about it. And so I did just that. I came home, I sat down with my son, we went over the pictures, um, we reviewed the video that I had together and he showed some interest. And so we uh, went back a few days later and we visited the lathe again. And the carriage was stuck and it wouldn't budge. Uh, the lathe was even more dirty than it is now. Um, we threw some mild cleaner at it and started to get the carriage to move. Um, we jotted down a few numbers and we came home to do even more research on the lathe. So we felt after doing some research and that the seller was asking a fair price for it. And so that weekend we went back and my son closed the deal and arranged for a pickup date. <clears throat> So a few days later, we went back again. We had hooked up to the trailer. We had departed for the seller's shop, and uh, my son handed over his billfold, and the seller was so kind to load it on our trailer with a forklift. I remember the seller's brother had said, you know, when we picked it up, he's like, I hope you have some really strong neighbors to help get that into your shop. And I kind of remember, you know, giving him a small courteous laugh, thinking to myself, you know, it's just a little hobby lathe, little bench top lathe. This thing can't be that heavy. Boy, was I wrong. This thing weighs about 300 pounds, and that's not counting the behemoth steel table it's on. So we strapped this thing to the trailer and headed for the homestead. So my apologies, but I didn't get much video, if any at all, getting this thing from the trailer into the shop. Uh, you know, what would be considered to be a small bench top lathe or a hobbyist lathe, this thing is obnoxiously heavy. The Atlas sales page says that this thing weighs 284 pounds, that's minus the motor. We huffed and we puffed and we cursed the 100 feet from the driveway into the shop carrying this beauty in, but we did it. We came in quickly, we washed up, we ate dinner. My son busted out the door before any of us had finished our dinner. He was out in the shop, he was determined to get the belts back on this thing, the motor mounted to the table, and he was gonna get this thing running before the night ended and he did just that so after some initial cleaning and removal of years and years of grime from the ways on this bed it's fully functional and it's in good working order come on I'll let you have a look
So here she sits waiting for us to create and make. Our research shows that uh, this is a model H54. Um, from my research, the H stands for a horizontal mounted cross shaft. The 54 means it has a 54 inch bed. It measures 36 inches in between centers. Um, when I open the gear cover door, you'll find it says 10F28. Um, the 10 stands for a 10 inch swing. The F means that it has a power cross feed. Um, now the 28, I have no idea what the 28 stands for. Um, you're just going to have to tell me in the comments below if you know because after all the research I did, I could not figure out what the 28 means, so I really don't know. I measured the thickness of the ways and they're 3 8 of an inch thick, which allegedly puts this in the pre-1950s era. It's got Babbitt bearings. If it had a T in front of the H, that would mean that it had Timken bearings, but this has got Babbitt bearings and they're in great shape. This is really a neat piece of machinery and it came with quite a bit of accessories and toolings um, that I look forward uh, to sharing with you in a future video. So if you're not subscribed below, make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Thanks again for watching. Share this with a uh, maker friend, uh, a machinist friend. Um, we appreciate that. And make sure you give that like button a little tappy tap tap below. Uh, every time you hit that like button, it really helps out our channel. We appreciate that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.